Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I'm gonna be talking about Quixel Mixer. Now, Quixel Mixer is part of the Quixel uh, suite of, of softwares and apps. Uh, you know, you have Bridge, you have Mixer, and uh, Mixer is a very similar software like Substance Painter, where uh, they use it for texturing models. Uh, but I've been using Mixer for a couple of years now, and I use it for texturing my assets for my 3D kits and any other project that I do. So I wanna show you some of the common things that I normally do for my assets. And so I wanna share those with you in this episode. Stay tuned. All right, so let's get started with some of the prep work that we need to get done before we actually get into Quixel. And, uh, you know, one of those is, of course, getting the model. Now, these models here, I did them in 3D coat, uh, a little bit of sculpting, something very simple, and, um, and I decimated them as well. Not too much, right? So they're still, they're still like that. And I also did some unwrapping, very basic in Blender. So I just went into edit mode, so like everything. And I did a press U, smart UV project, and then I get this. And so same thing with this one. And so now I am going to export them. Now, one thing to keep uh, for export is that make sure that you select this selection only, and then we will, <clears throat> name it and export it. Now, the other thing that is going to be important is that every time I do this Blender to Quixel to Blender workflow, every time I export them, I want to make sure that my selection or the model that I'm exporting is at the center of, of the world. Because if it isn't, then it's gonna appear like that, whatever it is in the world of Quixel and that, uh, that, that could be uh, problematic. And so I'm exporting this one as well, and we'll call this a uh, stencil, right? So now, now that we have exported this, we can go into Quixel. Now, uh, I'm not really going to give you a basics of Quixel, like, you know, where to find stuff. Like, uh, I think I have another tutorial for that. Um, and so I'm gonna assume that you at least know your way around it for the basic stuff. And so uh, now, as you can see, you know, we start Quixel with a plane. And we want to change this plane for our model. So we're going to go into setup, type, instead of plane, we'll go to custom mesh. And we're going to find our model. And so we are uh, going to select column. Let's open that up. And now we have our model. Right? So now we can go into layers. Now, there is sort of like a certain process that I normally do probably 95% of the time with assets like this. And so that's what I want to show you. You know, the, in, in Quixel, there's so much uh, stuff that you can do in here, but uh, I try to keep it as simple as possible and as fast as possible while getting a sort of somewhat uh, presentable results. And so we'll go through that. So understand that there is a lot more stuff that you can do, but I want to show you sort of like what I normally do. And so I'm going to go to a surface layer and I am going to look for some sort of stone. Um, one thing that I keep in mind when I'm working here is that there is so many things that you can do for, you know, with this materials, right? So if I select this oak wood, I don't necessarily need to use it for a piece of wood. I could use it for other things. And I'm gonna try to do that with this model, but let's try to find some, uh, some base here. So I'm gonna, Select here rock and stone, and maybe some uh, concrete. I'm just gonna look around and see what I can uh, what I can get. I sort of like this here, so we'll select that one. And you know, one thing is that I mean, this already looks pretty cool. Uh, very easy to uh, to set up here, but. You know, one of the things that I like to play with is the actual color of the texture. So I can play with the color here. I'm just gonna make that a little bit tan here. I can also play with the uh, lighting here. So right now it's on indoors. And so I'm gonna sort of go through some of this to get a similar result, sort of like this piece of one. And um, so this could be, uh, you know, our base texture. Now, 
you're gonna see if I really zoom in here, you're gonna see that the model is sort of like breaking into pieces. And what this means is something that you have to uh, take in uh, uh, note for is this material has all these maps and it also has a displacement map. We don't really need a displacement for something like this. So I'm always gonna be turning off displacement. And you can see that I'm getting um, better results that way. Right? And uh, I'm gonna explore another base layer here. So maybe something like this. And I'll turn off the one that we did before. And I'm going to change the color a little bit. Sort of like this, because it sort of looks like all damaged. So let's turn on displacement. And with shift and right click, I'm gonna rotate the light just so I can see the other portions if I need to. So I'm gonna play with the color here a little bit. I sort of like this one actually. I guess some nice uh, breakups here. Just make it like it's like a damage column or something like that, which is kind of cool. Um, I can always go to placement here and change the scale if I need to. Oh, I'm doing it on the wrong material here. So if you need to rotate it or change some of these uh, scaling attributes, right? So it's kind of cool there. So let's say this is our base. Um, I normally like to do a process and I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna make it slightly lighter. I can change this again later on if it's too light, but and um, I'm going to add a mask stack. So I'm gonna click here, add a curvature map mask. And I'm gonna press nine to see the mask, right? So I know what it's doing. And I'm gonna play with the levels to increase or reduce the contrast. So if I get something like that, I can press one to see everything um, back. And so I like to do this, this is like my light um, material here. I like to do this because this enhances the set of edges a little bit, right? Maybe they're sort of like a little bit worn out. Uh, it sort of pushes that that surface a little bit better. So if I turn on and off here, it sort of like enhances the texture a little bit. And once I get that, I'm gonna duplicate that one again. And on this one, I'm gonna make it darker. And on the uh, mask, on the curvature, I'm gonna invert. And again, I'm gonna play with the levels here. This is gonna be slightly different. And so for this one, I am trying to enhance the sort of ambient occlusion cavities of the model, right? So if I move this here, or turn it on and off, you can see that sort of like on the cavities here, gonna get a little darker, which is kind of nice. And this might be too dark, so I can always go back here, go to the uh, color, make it slightly lighter, maybe make it a little bit warmer here. Right? And so this is usually like the first step. Now I can always bring in another texture, let's say something like, <clears throat> maybe something like this, right? And maybe I don't have a displacement and play with the scale here. And I can add a curvature again. And so maybe this will help me sort of add like some sort of uh, color variance to this. Now this might be too much, so I can go back to the color here and sort of change that a little bit. So 
something like that. Now, the next step is I'm going to add a solid layer instead of a material layer. So add a solid layer. I'm going to make this quite dark here. And on the albedo normal, I'm going to go to multiply. I'm going to reduce the opacity just slightly. And I'm actually going to add a mask stack again. But at this time, I'm going to do a position gradient. And you can see that it's getting darker at the top. I wanted the opposite. So I'm going to go invert and I want it at the bottom. And I can always play with the range to see how much of that I want, right? And this is just like a slight detail to make the bottom a little bit darker. I can always reduce the opacity here a little bit. And so that way it sort of like implies that it's a little bit maybe more dirty and stuff at the bottom. Slightly there, right? And so this right now, like this, like I could uh I could export this and this will, you know, this will be fine, right? Um this is the normal stuff that I that I normally do here. Of course, I can do more, maybe I can add a uh, let's do a decal here. Maybe I want to add some sort of like crack, right? So this asphalt crack here, as you can see, it's getting repeated all throughout. So maybe I can increase the scale here, maybe something like that, make that a little bit darker. Let's move this down a bit. So we can still get it, but it's sort of like blend in with the texture instead of like over it. So I'm going to move this down a little bit, a couple of uh, layers down. I'm going to increase the scale again, something like that. Now it has a little bit of more cracks in there. Now this again is sort of uh, optional. It's not really necessary. Um, and I can also do a uh, surface layer and I can maybe grab some moss and let's pick this one here and I can go mask stack again and instead of a curvature position I'm going to do a normal now on this one I am going to press 9 to see the masks here and then I'm going to play with this because I want to add the top faces here. Press 1 to see it. And so I want a little bit of moss growing on the top faces here. And I can also duplicate this. And instead of a normal here, I can delete these and add a position gradient. Same thing for the darkness. So now this one is sort of growing from the bottom up. Let's make this a little bit darker. And there we have it. Right. So now um, maybe we can play with the scale of this a little bit. The great thing about Quixel is everything is non-destructible, so you can always go back and change things. And so now, once you have your asset, you can go into export, name the folder. I always like to make a folder, a new folder for each texture packed. And I am going to find where I want to um, save it, pretty much, right? So select the folder. And I just need Albedo or Diffuse. I'm going to choose Albedo. We don't need Displacement. And we want Normals, Roughness, and the export resolution is going to be 4K. And now we go Export 5 Maps. And this is going to create a salt folder. So it's really going to create a folder called uh, Column. And then you're going to see the maps inside that folder. 
Now, if you really like this content, I just want to let you know that I do have a Patreon where I share a lot of more information. I share tutorials, critiques, 3D kits, everything that I do on my daily work. And so if you're interested in that, feel free to check that out. And if you would like to support me in that way, I really, really appreciate it. And so now back in Blender, you always come here and uh, select our assets, create a new material. And let's open Shader Editor. Now, if you have no Wrangler on, let's name this column. You can press Control Shift and T, and then you're gonna find the maps that you exported, which are these. Uh, we don't need a specular, so we'll keep that there, and then uh, we'll and we'll click that. And so, doing it this way, Blender is gonna attach the maps to their respective um, slots. And so now you can see here that we uh, have our asset texture. Now, a lot of times I have to play with the roughness to make it really work. And so I am uh, just to see a little bit better. I'm going to change my textures to 4K here just so you can actually see it a little bit better. And on my roughness, I am going to add a ramp and this might or might not work. Uh, it's going to be dependent on the texture. And so I'm going to play with this and see what I can get. It's probably going to be something more like this. And so now if you have some sort of light source, we can see a little bit of that roughness there. Which is kind of nice. All right. And so and so there we go, that, that, that's pretty much it. Now, the great thing about this is that if you plan to do a lot of assets like this, right? Most of the time, if you already spend the time making this right here, um, you can save this, right? So this is going to be our column here. I can go to setup, find the other asset that I'm gonna texture. So in this case, stencil here. And a lot of times the texture works you don't, you won't have to do much work here to make it fit, you know, whatever model you bring in right now, I can, I can deal with this, right? Um, let's see here. So no displacement, no displacement, no displacement, right? So I can actually, I can actually use it like this, right? So I can go back here, change the name of the subfolder. So in this case, stencil. <laughs> And, you know, same folder location and 4K, and I can just export again. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't completely. You may have to tweak some of the layers, but uh, for the most part, it usually does. It gives a pretty good result. And so now I can come in here again, new material, stencil, select the node here, control shift T find the maps, which are these, no specular. And then there we have it. And so now we keep sort of the same uh, look in materials throughout the, um, throughout all the, all the models. And so again, you can see how fast and easy you can get some pretty good results you know it's not perfect again but this is you know for concept art and stuff this is pretty good and again there's a lot of stuff that you can still do in in in, uh, in in mixer um that will be a little bit more unique or more um specific to the model but um i found that this process is is very uh very helpful all right guys so that's it for today's episode thank you guys so much for watching I really hope that this gives you a general idea on how you can use Mixer to, to pretty much texture your models for your kits or your projects. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions. And if not, I will see you guys in the next video.